There are many different types of heirloom potatoes on the market, and choosing the right one to cook with can be a challenge. But here to help me sort through it is Sarah Kate from thekitchen.com. Sarah Kate, earlier you showed me all the different types of potatoes. Now you're going to show me how to cook with some. That's right. Which ones are we cooking with? Well, we're going to separate it now into smaller varieties and larger varieties. Sure, okay. So we're going to be starting with these big ones, and mm -hmm. these are the, some of the starchy ones, That's as you right. showed me earlier. Okay. But what are we going to do with them? Well, with the large potatoes, we're going to make um, what I call playing card potatoes. And we're going to slice them very thin, take off the skins. Okay. Uh, you're making a brick. Oh, okay. Don't worry about little ends. I'm going to use the mandolin, and you can use that knife. Okay. And you want to cut them an eighth to a quarter of an inch. So as thin as possible, but... As, th as thin as possible, but part of why I like using different varieties of potatoes is that they have different levels of starch. They're going to yield a different texture. Same with different sizes. Okay. So you don't have to worry about being exact. So one method of cutting the way you are as an alternative to the mandolin is to cut almost all the way through and then take the last side and Slice shave it, it off. Side, yeah. That's right. So with your stack of potatoes, you'll arrange them like you're about to deal some cards. Okay. So you could add some of yours there and maybe okay. the others on top. And then I might sort of, you know, move a little bit of the purple around just to add some color variety there. Okay. So now we're going to sprinkle some herbs on the potatoes. Okay. Could you snip some rosemary for me, please? Sure. I'll chop some thyme and sage. And they really do go together nicely. So this thyme is really, really fine. I'm not even going to pull it off the branch. I'm just going to pinch some of it on. And with potatoes, you shouldn't be afraid of a lot of herbs. Well, I think rosemary uh, particularly goes well with potatoes. It's a classic. Potatoes, yeah. Right. The next step is a little drizzle of olive oil and a sprinkling of salt. Okay. So you can help me out with the salt. And this is sea salt? That's sea salt. Mm -hmm. Sea salt really has a much nicer texture. Okay. Great. So this is ready for the oven. We'll slide it in there. And we'll get some nice brown curled edges. And that's where it really starts looking like cards. They kind of curl up and it's just beautiful. Now, how long will it need to stay in there? Uh, it really depends, you know, on how you've cut the, the potatoes. But I, for me, it's 20, 30 minutes. Okay. And you can just test by putting a little edge of a uh, paring knife in, seeing how See, soft it soft is. Soft it is, mm -hmm. okay. And is there something else we can prepare while that's cooking? Absolutely. So these little fingerlings here, I think there's no better way to do them than put them on the grill. And fingerlings really come in a lot of different sizes. And they can be as small as this. I love that. Or they can be as large as some of these. Should you cut them or should you just put them on whole? Uh, the best way to deal with the differing sizes is sometimes the big ones need to be parboiled just okay. for a minute or two, boiling water, brought out and dried, and then paired with the small ones. So with these, I just skewer them and then give them, again, a little bit of fat, in this case, olive oil again, and dress them with some dried herbs. The herbs that I really like, some chili powder, ancho or chipotle, some cumin and dill, which feels just mm. like some of the some of the spices and herbs you might have in South America. Sure. And which um, is where potatoes. Come exactly. From. So you just kind of want to grease them up a little bit. Just so the spices stick. That's right. And kind of turn them around. And then let's just pick some herbs and um, okay. Sprinkle them on. Aren't those colors amazing? Yeah, beautiful. And cumin is really a great one for potatoes. And then a little bit more salt. Okay. And it's almost ready. Pepper? Oh, it looks good already. Now we'll put these on the grill and cook them for not long at all. Okay, Sarah Kate, it's been a few minutes. You think those potatoes are ready? Let's check them. All right. They look great. Oh, those look good. Don't they? They look really good. Let's put some on a plate and we can taste them. They're nice and soft. Mmm. Wow. Nice, right? Wow, very tasty, and those spices are great. Mm -hmm. All right, now how about our other dish? Okay, well, there's one final step, which is putting a little bit of crumbled gorgonzola on top mm. and putting it back in the oven for just a second so that it can melt. Okay. Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. Isn't it? Mm. Can, can you smell the gorgonzola? I can smell it. It smells really nice. Yeah. All right. Let's get a good mix of colors here in our portion. Oh, that looks nice. See, these ones on the end, what I love, they're like potato chips almost. Oh, they're like crunchy. They're so good. 
Mmm. Wow. What a great combination of and flavors. It's just it's so easy mm -hmm. to do. It was so delicious. Yep. Well, Sarah Kate, thank you very much thank for you so much. showing me both of these wonderful dishes that couldn't be simpler and really showcase the wonderful ways to cook all of these great potatoes. That's right. Thanks again. And a pleasure. Thank you.